In our discourse so far, we've covered the cardiovascular system. We understand the components of a blueberry. Um, so that's really the science, the truth piece. We also need to recognize um, if we were to just talk about the science piece and we left out the politics, it would really not be a full education from a systems perspective. So what are the politics around what I've just shared? Well, there's really an attack on freedom in terms of the freedom to um, discuss the whole nature of the cardiovascular system to the broad public. So if you go and really look um, at what's going on, you literally have a singular solution, which is promoted by big pharma. And most medical doctors are constrained to really talk about diet, which is unfortunate. And what you find is that if you go, there's really what we call a reductionist narrative in scientific and media establishment. Basically, it's not holistic understanding. It's centered, everything's centered around cholesterol, cholesterol, cholesterol. There's an emphasis on treatment, not prevention. And moreover, there's an over-reliance on drugs, statins, blood thinners, blood pressure medication. And moreover, there's no consistent guidelines anyone gets on diet or exercise. And frankly, broadly, there's really no discussion of alternative. Okay. And what you do see see in 90% of the, of the discussion of when it comes to cardiovascular diseases, you got to take Lipitor, you got to take Entrestor, you got to take Eloquis, or you know, take an aspirin. That's probably the closest you get to something potentially valuable, right? But it's really about drugs, drugs, drugs. This is where most of the quote unquote discourses, this is where freedom's really constrained, where not everyone gets an equal airplay. And obviously this is done because if you can look, you're looking at a $40 billion industry in 2016, which has now grown to almost a $65 billion industry. Um, if you're talking about other stuff, you're eating away at people's profit and um, and market share, right? So there's a huge motive to keep the discourse on this and really not have free discourse in other areas. So that's a politics. On the other side, not only is big pharma there pushing the drugs, but doctors are actually constrained from even getting any education on nutrition. Most cardiovascular uh, cardiologists, as you can see in this headlines, lack uh, uh, education and willingness to discuss nutrition. Um, the study in PubMed said there's a def deficiency of nutrition education practice, and most cardiologists lack heart um, health uh, dietary education themselves. And they, in fact, uh, neglect to tell their patients. So this is really the politics. So from a freedom standpoint, there's really an attack on freedom for the doctors to be encouraged to study diet. And um, the big pharma guys really own so much of the media airwaves, Fox, CNN, and what they're actually putting out there as a solution. So um, that's the politics. All right. Um, now let's talk about the health aspect. So we talked about the science, the truth aspect of the cardiovascular system. We've talked about the attack on freedom, but now let's go to understanding the health. What can you do um, and how do blueberries actually affect the cardiovascular system, given all this background? So we're going to jump to the health, truth, freedom, health, right? So the health aspect is blueberries are shown in considerable amount of literature to be anti-hypertensive. That's an important aspect in cardiovascular health. Anti-diabetic, as you know, diabetes and cardiovascular health are related. Anti-hyperglycemic and anti-arthrosclerotic effect against arthrosclerosis, okay? So again, these are those important chemicals we talked about. And these things work together to support various aspects of endothelial function, okay? So now we're gonna go through and look at the health aspects of the molecules within blue blueberries, why they work, why blueberries are actually valuable. So again, that's the education. You're welcome to go and I encourage you to look to watch this video and educate others, share it with people. But this is why. Share it with your doctor. Um, I would say most doctors, uh, unfortunately, don't even have the time to understand this. So uh, share it with your doctors and other healthcare practitioners. So first of all, the endothelial cells, right, produce nitric oxide from enzyme ENO, okay? So this is the endothelial cells. For, so ENOS helps produce nitric oxide, okay? So it goes through uncoupled ENOS and you get nitric oxide, right? Now, nitric oxide right here activates SGC. And why is SGC important right here? SGC is important because it converts GTP over here to CGMP in. So this is your smooth muscle cell. And this is, remember, it's very, very important. This is the muscle cells, uh, which lead to their relaxation. When you have relaxation, this promotes vasorelaxation, which promotes antihypertension. So it's literally, you have tension in your vasculature, okay? In the muscles. So when you're relaxed, that's why things like meditation are good, okay? Relaxation. You get the 
the relaxation of the blood vessel. All right, so that's what goes on, okay? The ENOS produces nitric oxide, which produces SGC, which causes relaxation. So that's a good thing. Now, when you have oxidative stress, this is not a good thing, which is stress in your system, which creates reactive oxygen species. Look what that does. That stops ENOS right here from producing uncoupled enos to create nitric oxide okay so if you have oxidative stress which is going on with most people if you're a human being living in this world you're gonna not have as much nitric oxide release okay that's why people have you know when you don't get no this is why people have uh you know uh sexual issues in men right this is why viagra came to release nitric oxide but look at this when you take anthocyanins which come from blueberries it neutralizes ross so when you knock out ross this chemical reaction can produce properly okay that's what's good all right this chemical reaction can produce properly all right that's a good thing all right so the anthocyanin from blueberries neutralized ross and they and they restored the production of no okay that's what the good news is here that's what we want to take away here okay all right so anthocyanins are good because they stop oxidative stress so let your body do its natural thing so it's really a medicine right here okay so this comes from blue blueberries and the next chemical we want to look at is anthocyanins and quercetin so when you have both of these they do something important they stop you know their anti-diabetic now how do they do that well first of all endo endothelial dysfunction is caused from oxidative stress and how do you get oxidative Oxidative stress? Well, if you have superoxide and you have hydrogen peroxide, these are not good molecules. They lead to endothelial dysfunction. So superoxide and hydrogen peroxide, these are oxidative stress molecules that produce endothelial dysfunction, which leads to diabetes. So what stops the formation of these two, superoxide and hydrogen peroxide? Well, two very important chemicals. Superoxide dismutase blocks superoxide. That's good. Catalase blocks hydrogen peroxide. That's good. And and so how do you get these? Well, if you go upstream, there's a chemical called NRF2, and NRF2 promotes superoxide and promotes catalase. So a lot of people in the comments are talking about NRF2. Some of you have studied this. Yes, NRF2 is very good. Um, and NRF2 produces, promotes these two antioxidant enzymes. And guess what? Quercetin from blueberries and anthocyanins from blueberries actually support the the uh, uh, the upregulation of NRF2 in the endothelial cells. Very, very valuable. So anthocyanins and quercetin lead to the upregulation of NRF2, which creates superoxide dismutase and catalase, which blocks these bad chemicals, superoxide and hydrogen peroxide, which lead to endothelial dysfunction. There you go. Okay. Very, very valuable. Someone said blue blueberries, strawberries, blackberries. Yep. There you go. That was from HWM Liberty. Okay. All right. Someone else sells wild flows and frozen blueberries are especially good. Great. All right. So that's why, again, you're learning why from a systems perspective. Let's now move to another um, aspect of how blueberries have an anti-diabetic effect. So hyperglycemia, okay, hyperglycemia, too much sugar there leads to diabetes, right? Um, so how do you stop that? Okay, hyperglycemia. Well, let's go upstream. So there's a very important peptide called glucagon-like peptide 1, GLP-1, that induces insulin secretion in the pancreatic beta cell. Well, what supports that? Well, anthocyanins from blueberries support GLP-1, which leads to more insulin secretion, which increases glucose uptake, right? So it reduces glucose in your bloodstream, right? So this leads to lowering blood sugar and mitigation of hyperglycemia. Hyperglycemia leads to diabetes. Anthocyanins from the blueberries control the glucose blood by upregulating GLP-1, which increases insulin secretion. So in some ways, you're almost getting a natural insulin release. So blueberries mitigate diabetes by reducing hyperglycemic condition. There you go. Another very powerful value of the anthocyanins in blueberry. And then the final thing I want to talk about is the anti-arthrosclerotic effect. What this means is plaque formation, okay? Now, if you if you go to your doctor, they'll say you, oh, you know, you got a lot of this bad cholesterol, LDL, which is low density lipoprotein, LDL. That's called the quote unquote bad cholesterol. Now, what happens is how does plaque get formed? Well, the LDL gets converted to OXLDL. And this happens when you have superoxide, when you have endothelial dysfunction, when your endothelial is not working well, you produce these reactions 
of oxygen species, oxidative stress to be specific, and that supports the conversion of LDL to OXLDL, which leads to plaque formation. This is this pathway right here is not something you want. But guess what happens? The anthocyanins and quercetin in blueberries block this pathway. So they block the for, the formation of OXLDL, which leads to arterial plaque formation. Okay, because OXLDL adheres to the endothelial cell surface and initiates plaque formation that leads to narrowing of the arteries causing arterial sclerosis. Really powerful, these blueberries, okay? So if you're looking at a way and you're saying, wow, I wanna really stop plaque formation, well, look at what the anthocyanins and quercetins do. They literally block the LDL from going to the OX LDL, which causes plaque formation. So I hope this is helping you understand why, why, why from a systems perspective, all right? Now, I've shared everything with you from a molecular systems perspective. There's also another way that our movement, our course teaches you how to look at the body. Also from an engineering systems perspective and from a Eastern medicine perspective. Again, when you take this, the foundations of systems course and you become part of our community, we actually give you access to a tool absolutely free, your body, your system. And that tool will give you an Eastern systems perspective, okay? But it's the actually the same stuff. And the tool, your body, your system lets you understand your body as a system having three forces, transport, conversion, and storage. I'm not gonna go into the details. You can learn it when you take the course, but you'll, you'll be given a tool where you answer a set of questions. They'll figure out what kind of system you are. Very easy for anyone to use. Then you can understand the red dot is where your system should be. And everyone's red dot will be different. The black dot denotes where you are today. Ideally, the black dot should be on the red dot. That means you're in balance. And then the system will actually calculate foods for you. It's a personalized systems approach to understanding how foods affect you. Okay. So again, this is another reason I want all of you guys to take advantage of this tool. You're not um, um, helping, you know, uh, me or uh, to sell some course, but you're actually helping yourself because you're going to take this systems approach. And the tool, which took us many, many years to develop, teaches you that systems approach. Now using the same systems approach, what you learn is food is medicine. Different foods affect the amount of transport, conversion, storage in your body. And you can learn how to use foods alchemically to support yourself. Okay. And so when you look at, by the way, uh, if you become a Truth Freedom Health supporter, you get all of these, uh, this capability also. So what does blueberries to do? Well, blueberries stabilize the force of transport in your body. They stabilize conversion and they increase storage. That's what they do, which means they help build tissue. Okay. They help build infrastructure, but they stabilize digestive processes. They stabilize, you know, if you're erratic, they help calm you down also. Okay. So that's what you see here. How much should you take. Okay. So again, truth, freedom, and health. We've talked about the truth. We've talked about political aspects, but we want to deliver you from an informational perspective. Um, what should you take? Again, we're, uh, you know, the medical disclaimers is not a medical show. This is a systems educational show, but we're just looking at what's out in the literature and we've congealed it. I mean, organized and aggregated it. Cook at all says you can take about 350 milligrams a day of anthocyanins, which will help reduce hypertension. Now the blueberry extract also supports memory performance. That's from White et al. 2018, about 100 milligrams per day. Freeze-dried whole blush blueberries, freeze-dried powder really helps obesity control. And that's 2% weight per weight per day. Okay. And that's Seymour et al. 2011. So you can again, re review the video, but these are some work from the research. Again, share this with your doctor. Okay. Uh, Joy Allison says, thank you for your commitment to truth, transparency, health, and freedom. You're welcome, Joy. Um, again, one of the best ways you can support what we're doing is please become warrior your scholars, become educators. Um, we have a path. We literally have created a path for people. So we don't just, you know, uh, whine, you know, and, and just talk about the problems, learn the science of systems, educate others, take a systems perspective, become part of our global community, and then give the course to kids absolutely free. Okay. So we have a clear path. The next piece is I want to talk a little bit about organic blueberries. Okay. Remember the organic blueberries are preferred over conventionally grown. The conventionally grown contain a high level of pesticides. The thin skin allows the chemicals to enter the fresh uh, fruits flesh. Um, so organic farming produces healthier fruits. Um, if you can't get organic, understand the source. Maybe you know of some people. Um, sometimes the organic certification is hard to get. If it's wild blueberries, very good. Um, just make sure it, there's no pesticide runoffs. 
But the organic blueberries also have more phenols, more anthocyanins, higher antioxidant activity than conventionally grown. And we um, have created also a, a, a whole certification called Certified Clean and Certified Raw, where we have, and you'll see these certifications where we said products should be safely produced, minimally processed and bioavailability. And this was something we actually created a certification you'll see on products out there. So in summary, blueberries have several health benefits, including cardiovascular health, cognitive and vision health, good for the brain. The anthocyanins from blueberries upregulate and release the vasodilator nitric oxide NO, which lowers hypertension. So now you know why. Blueberries low, lower blood glucose levels by upregulating more insulin, right? Through that GLP-1. Blueberries also promote upregulation of antioxidant enzymes that mitigate diabetes via downregulation of those oxidative stress molecules. And then finally, blueberry compounds prevent arterial sclerosis by downregulating oxidative of stress that causes plaque formation and hardening hardening of the arteries.